this a chance for, for a gold rush? I mean, it's a great opportunity for British business, isn't there now? Now Gaddafi has gone. Well, there will be opportunities for British business as Libya uh, seeks to rebuild uh, the nation. We've taken great care during the campaign uh, to avoid destroying critical infrastructure. Libya is a relatively wealthy country with uh, oil reserves and I expect that there will be opportunities for British and indeed other uh, com companies uh, to get involved in the reconstruction of Libya. Given that relative wealth and given the budget situation of the Ministry of Defence, should Libya be contributing towards the, the bill that Britain has run up, doing what it's been doing in the last seven or eight months? Well, the costs of the campaign that we've just fought will be met from the Treasury Reserve, not from the defence budget, so they won't have any impact uh, on the uh, overall defence budget. France is already demanding 35% of Libya's gross, national, gross oil production, and I suspect that the people of Libya will be furious and outraged that they are paying France for having bombed the infrastructure, having destroyed the schools, the hospitals, the, the water supply. The safe, secure, welcoming city, full of life and warmth that I had driven through days previously had transformed. It lay in ruins and you could not look in any direction without seeing guns or heavy weaponry. Many people had gone into hiding, been killed, or, and thousands of others had fled. And the people that I knew who remained, who had been the very people who had helped me to learn about the glorious recent history of Gaddafi's Libya, were inevitably traumatized and in a complete state of shock. Libya reached a point, as Dan said, of having the highest standard of living in Africa, a high level of literacy, universal health care and free university education, a high status for women, in society and the greatest degree of equality for the large black population in the whole of North Africa and the Middle East. Those 40 years of revolutionary achievements have now been reversed. And for what? As Gaddafi's close brother Hugo Chavez said in his recent letter to the United Nations General Assembly, right now there is a very serious threat to global peace, he said. A new cycle of colonial wars which started in Libya with the sinister objective of refreshing the capitalist global system, end quote. He knows that his country will be targeted in that cycle with the very same model that they used against Libya and are now using against Syria. In the absence of an effective anti-imperialist media that can challenge and preempt the tricks of imperialism through its global media, it is the role of all progressive people to champion the sovereign states of the global south who, like Libya and Syria, are a thorn in the side of the West. Otherwise, they will be picked off one by one to add fuel to the dying fire of imperialism. doctor who treated Muammar Gaddafi's son says part of the younger Gaddafi's hand needs amputation. Libya's fighters had captured Saif al-Islam in the southern desert on Saturday. Muammar Gaddafi's son Saif al-Islam has gangrenous fingers that require amputation, a doctor who treated him said on Thursday. Saif al-Islam has been nursing injuries to his right hand, which he says was sustained during a NATO airstrike weeks ago. Fighters from Libya's western mountains captured Saif al-Islam in the southern desert on Saturday and flew him to their stronghold town of Zintan. And uh, the fingers was cut, half cut. And uh, it, was not, it wasn't cut, but uh, sharp, some sharp even, or some knife or something like this. Because Libyan Prime Minister Abdurrahim al kib has said Saif al-Islam is receiving the best possible treatment. Uh, now, uh, this wound is... Uh, no, it's not good condition because uh, this wound uh, needs reamputation, you know, because this wound is inflamed, it's pus, 
Zintan's fighters say they will hand Saif al-Islam over to the provisional government once it is formed. The International Criminal Court is indicting Saif al-Islam for crimes against humanity and has issued a warrant for his arrest. Libya, however, says it will not hand him over to The Hague, and the ICC's prosecutor says Tripoli can try him if it wants. On Wednesday, the Chinese regime said it would go ahead with carrying out Pacific naval exercises amid concerns over its increasing military power and naval aggression in the South China Sea. The announcement was made after U.S. plans to strengthen its Asia-Pacific military bases and to place 2,500 U.S. Marines in the northern Australian city of Darwin. The Chinese Defense Ministry issued a statement saying the drill is not aimed at any country. It stated, quote, China's freedom of navigation and other legal rights should not be obstructed. According to Japan's Kyoto News Agency, the Japanese Defense Ministry reported six Chinese naval vessels were already in the Pacific near southern Japan since Tuesday. Maritime disputes between China and other Asian countries have hit the headlines in recent months. The Chinese regime and five other neighboring countries have claims on portions of the South China Sea, believed to have large oil and gas reserves. Last week at the East Asia Summit in Indonesia, Chinese leader Wen Jiabao warned U.S. President Barack Obama to keep out of the sea dispute. Journalists normally keep their political views to themselves, but an award-winning Russian TV anchor has virtually ended her on-air career with one offensive hand gesture. Tatiana Limonova was reading a story about Russia's president being appointed the chairman of APEC. But after saying that US President Barack Obama held the previous post, she raised her middle finger. Limonova was sacked on the same day, but the station claimed she was gesturing to her camera crew and didn't realise that she was still on air. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, November 25th, 2011, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, that's ggnonline.com, and ddarko2012 is my YouTube channel, and Global Government News has a group on Facebook. Um, you can find the link with all the headlines and links for the articles that I've covered for today in YouTube's video description. All right, I'm ready to get going. I still have uh, plenty of news to get to in the remaining um, video here. It says here, Gaddafi demise revives Libya's Olympic dream. So athletes and sports programs in Libya were woefully neglected during Muammar Gaddafi's four-decade rule, right? Rule and oppression. With Gaddafi's regime toppled last month, Libya's athletes and its sports officials are hoping for a better future. So I guess Gaddafi said in, the, in his uh, green book, sport as a social activity must be for the masses. Because down here it says sports was not a priority for Gaddafi. He said in an interview, uh, says we are very optimistic now. So see, sports wasn't uh, on the top priority for Gaddafi. No, it was trying to uh, create a, a competitive currency for not just uh, the African continent, but Libya, right? And um that's why that's the main reason why he was taken out uh, we've already saw the beginning of this video where that woman was describing what Libya was what it was like with the women had rights um, they had all these services um, but you can see where the priorities l uh, lie if you just check out the first video where you have a bunch of Americans fat Amer obese Americans uh, with their credit cards in hand um, squeezing through the to the doorways to these department stores so you definitely know where the priorities lie. Turkey says uh, can no longer tolerate Syria bloodshed. So I've been covering the news for about two years now, and, and Turkey has not really been in the news at all in the past 24 months. And now all of a sudden, they're everywhere, right? And uh, now they're saying, um, uh, uh, you know, they're calling for Syria right now for a no-fly zone, basically, is what they're doing. And it says here, uh, if it doesn't, there are steps we can take in consultation with the Arab League. He said, I want to say clearly that we have no more tolerance for the bloodshed in Syria. The attitude of friendly and fraternal countries on this subject is clear. Syria, six elite military pilots killed in ambush. The Syrian armed forces say in a rare televised statement that six elite military pilots have been killed in an ambush 
And it says here, Syria is the scene of the deadliest crackdown against the Arab Springs eruption of protest, blah, 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 blah. So you can go in there and uh, check that out. Statement warns Syria will hit back if any attempt to cause chaos. This is all, of course, provocateurion going on. Outside intervention, e, uh, UAE urges nationals to leave Syria. And U.S. on November 23rd, 2011, urges Americans to leave Syria immediately. U.N., numerous reports of child torture by Syria's security forces of the propaganda uh, starts up. And then we have this InfoWars article, Next Propaganda Phase, UN says Syria tortures children in order to send in the bombers and introduce a sort of carnage in Syria and the, uh, the U.S. and NATO inflicted in Libya. Propaganda war needs to be dialed up. Allegations of child abuse usually do the trick. Journalists call it the hook. So pri just like the prior uh, to the invasion of the Iraq War in 91, talking about a human rights uh, hearing showcasing Iraqi um, abuses, says the media event allowed a 15-year-old Kuwaiti girl known as uh, Nayirana to claim Saddam invaders threw babies out of incubators uh, in the hospital of Kuwait. And it turned out that she was actually part of the royal family. Her father was the ambassador to the United States. And the testimony was cooked up by Hill and Knowlton, a public relations group that was repeated over and over again by the media. Okay, then we have uh, media lies used to provide a pretext for another humanitarian war, protests in Syria, who counts the dead. And it goes through all these reports that we see on Reuters and AP and all that saying about so many uh, pro-democracy protesters killed, killed, killed. But what you never see is the articles that I usually cover, um, which are what? Which are Syrians' uh, a government being killed. It says here, UK French spies meet Syrian dissidents, so British and French intelligence agencies have reportedly tasked their agents with contacting Syrian dissidents based in Lebanon in order to help fuel unrest in then we have Turkey thrown in their two cents again. Turkey confronted with possible civil or Syrian civil war, foreign intervention in uh, Syria. This is from financialtimes.com. Go in there and check that out. BRIC countries warn against Syria intervention. Russia and China, along with their three partners in the BRICS group of emergency, emerging economies, sorry, have warned against foreign intervention in Syria without UN approval. Have reports say Russian ships in Syrian waters delivered advanced anti-aircraft missile system and technicians. And that may have been part of the uh, uh, package that Obama brought over to Australia, right? So it's here, Egyptian military using nerve gas on protesters. Then Egypt appoints Mubarak-era prime minister. We didn't even hear about that, have we? Egyptian foreign minister, prime minister, uh, Kamal Ghanzari, accepted a request from the ruling generals to form a new government on Thursday, state newspaper said on its website. Next up, rebel army calls for airstrikes on Syria. So free Syrian army chief. Uh, on Thursday, call for foreign airstrikes on strategic targets in Syria to speed up the fall of the regime. So they want a regime change. U.S. calls on Egyptian military to hand over power as protesters mass into Tahrir Square. So you see all these foreign powers just telling other countries, sovereign nations, what to do. So like Turkey talking about Syria going to civil war, we have unrest can drag Egypt into civil war, which is what they want. And we have saboteurs blow up pipelines supplying Egyptian gas to Israel. Next up, Iran arrests 12 CIA agents planning attacks in Iran. CIA officers mark death of spy with rare requests, asking people who mark the 10th anniversary of the death of the first American killed in the Afghan war by donating to help the children of their fellow fallen. Now, I'm not happy that this individual is deceased, but at the same time, when you go on over there starting wars where um, uh, where me and my fellow man and women might have to go over there and start killing people for you, then we have a problem. So I'm not going to donate to what you guys are doing, which are basically starting wars. F you know, forget that, oh, you know, we uh, keep the big wars small, like uh, um, the Good Shepherd with Matt Damon. I thought that was BS, that line. So some more CIA work uh, kills uh, seven Afghan civilians, most of them children. Next, Kenya's military push should trigger greater international efforts to destabilize Somalia, that's what they mean, and want them to capitulate and end the expansion of terrorism tentacles, i.e. those that are resisting uh, the encroachment onto their sovereignty. So Ethiopia is fl flying CIA drones and killing Somalia women and children right now, but uh, they also want to get in there and deploy troops as well and kill more. U.S. drone attack kills 21 in Somalia. Indonesia to buy 24 re refurbished U.S. F-16 fighters. So a lot of going on, uh, drawing of the lines and equipping different countries with that. Rebel 
Normal cop guards to patrol South Korean prisoners. Sensors to detect abnormal behavior will soon begin patrolling South Korean prisoners. Artillery uh, men improve readiness in Fuji. That's right. Haiti president poised to create new military. Uh, Medvedev, U.S. forced NATO members into missile shield. And next up, nursing home workers use waterboard torture on 89-year-old women with dementia after arguing over ice cream. Senators demand military lockup of American citizens in a battlefield they define as being right outside your home. Criminals and cyber bullies to be banned from the web. Military orders cross removed from a chapel. Then 10-year-old Washington boy defends mom with BB gun. This is GGN. Thank you and God.